All right, so we're going to take a little trip through time with the model of, our, of the atom. Of course, we start with Democritus. He is the one that gave us the term for atom, an indivisible sphere, atomos, meaning that it was not cuttable, indestructible. And that was great, and Dalton kept that same model, and for lack of a better term, you can call it the solid sphere model. And again, he gave us that awesome atomic theory in the early 1800s, and that article we read said that they looked like billiard balls, so they were solid spheres, and that was great until some further testing and everything. There is more inside the atom. Yay, we're happy. Let's move on and see what else there is. So, of course, Thompson was up first, and he gave us the plum pudding model, which, yuck, outdated. I like to think of it as the chocolate chip cookie model. And in that little video snippet we saw, the British guy said he looked at his muffin, and he saw, said the same thing, like the chocolate chips were the negative electrons that Thompson discovered. And then the muffin or the cookie dough would be some form of positive material. And as he said in that video, it was like an amorphous blob. And we've got a neutral atom still with the negative electrons placed into some positive material. And then, of course, along came Rutherford, and he gave us our nuclear model. The electrons are orbiting around the nucleus. He found our small dense, positively charged nucleus through his gold foil experiment. And don't forget his working partner, Chadwick, he put the neutron in. And so combined, these two guys gave us the nuclear model. So we've got our protons and neutrons in the nucleus, electrons moving around it like the planets orbiting the sun. And we had to have those electrons moving because otherwise they would have been attracted right into the nucleus since opposite charges attract. Well then, Mr. Niles Bohr, not only are these electrons moving around the nucleus, but they are on specific energy levels. And just like the rungs of a ladder, if you climb up one rung of a ladder and fall off, it's not that big of a deal. If you climb to the top and fall off, a lot more energy is involved in that. So the energy levels in the atom, the ones closer to the nucleus, are have less energy. The electrons on those have less energy. Farther away, more energy. And so we gave a very specific amount of energy to these electrons, quantum. And when these electrons jump between energy levels, that's what's called a quantum leap. And you can Google that lovely 80s show if you'd like. It's fantastic, involving a hologram and a scientist and all that good stuff. But so Bohr's model of the atom worked awesome for hydrogen because it was very easy to keep track of the quantum leaps that the one electron in hydrogen is making. However, for all the rest of the atoms, like at lead, for example, 82 electrons, it's much harder to be very specific. So that's what led us to our lovely electron cloud and the modern atomic theory. So electrons are acting like both waves and particles. And then, as we heard in that article, our electrons are found in orbitals, regions where the electrons are most likely to be found. And they blend together and give us that lovely electron cloud. So because of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and Schrodinger's equation, it's very mathematical as to where these electrons are. Now we could give quantum numbers, we could assign them to the electrons in the atom, but that's a little more than the scope of this course. But beyond, I mean, we do need to know that these electrons are in orbitals, and we also need to know that the atoms like to be in their ground state, the lowest energy state possible. And that's going to be a key topic throughout, a key theme throughout chemistry, is that things want to be stable, low energy. So these atoms want to be in their low energy state, the ground state. Now by the definition of orbitals, you should write S, P, D, and F. Those are the shapes that orbitals can be in. And rather than me just telling you, hey, you know, orbitals are S, P, D, and F. 
Well, that's because of the, the shapes that they kind of come in, and it's based on energy. An s orbital is the simplest. It's spherically shaped. A p orbital ends up looking like uh, kind of like a peanut, p for peanut. D orbitals, when you put them all together, they kind of end up looking like a dumbbell there, like a dumbbell that you lift weights with. And then an f orbital ends up taking a shape like a flower. And so, again, it's based on different amounts of energy, but I just didn't want you to hear these terms without knowing a little bit of what's behind that. So that was our brief glimpse at the model of the atom through time. So there is that lovely atomic review song that you could check out. Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford, and Bohr. Yeah, that's why I teach. I don't sing. But feel free to check that out on the Moodle site. Have a good one.